talking when you were a winner from 10 years ago. <laughs> Not much older, which has really stimulated a, an interest of ours in how the nervous system ages. So when we were originally developmental neuroscientists. So uh, this award was actually not just me, it was for a grant that Frida and Miller and I were on, um, where Frida was called Investigator, and so all the work that I'll talk about is a, is a collaboration with Frida. And I'll talk about two things. The first is on axon degeneration, and why degeneration occurs in the nervous system, especially in response to myelin, which is quite an interest in the spinal cord injury field. And I'll talk a little bit about using an accessible stem cell source of, uh, for spinal cord injury repair just at, for chronic spinal cord injury repair at the end of the talk. So the question that Frida and I have asked over the years is how is the, yeah, how is the nervous system built, maintained as we age and repair? It's quite a daunting question. Um, the nervous system has 100 billion neurons made up of an average of 5,000 connections each. So um, how can we protect the nervous system from degeneration, cognitive dysfunction, and aging and facilitate repair? So that's the overall goal of the lab. And in this specific context, which I'll talk about, which started about 10 years ago, where our lab had identified the trapper growth factor receptor, and we spent many years defining the positive signaling uh, cascades emanating from that receptor, especially how it regulates cell growth and positively regulates cell survival. Frieda's lab was studying one of the major death receptors of the nervous system, the P75 neurotrophic receptor, elucidating the signaling cascades that are used by P75. And Frieda and I started collaborating together and realized that these life and death, pro-growth and anti-growth receptors are constantly fighting each other throughout development in the adult and injury, and they interact. And this is just one example of how TRAC uses a series of signaling proteins to try to suppress the death pathways um, emanating from P75. And this collaboration worked so well that Frieda and I got married just to really cement it us. <laughs> so the question that we're asking is, is P75 um, regulating degeneration of the nervous system, especially in, in, in uh, relation to this question? So what is myelin-induced axon degeneration? How important is it as a mechanism for maintaining um, the nervous system and for the plasticity of connectivity in the adult nervous system. So what's the function of myelin and myelinated tracts in the adult nervous system? Because this is one of our major problems in injury is how do we allow neuroaxons to regrow on myelin? And we hypothesize that this P75 neurotrophin receptor, which is induced in most adult neurons following injury and in many neurodegenerative conditions, is key player in causing axons to degenerate on myelin. And so what does this mean for axon degeneration in these conditions? And we don't know much about degeneration. We know a lot about the neuronal survival pathways, neuronal growth pathways, but we know very little about the neuronal degeneration pathways. So that's another question that we asked. So in collaboration with Isabel Aubert, Frieda and my lab started to look at P75-induced neurodegeneration, and we chose septal forebrain cholinergic axons, where uh, Katja Hansa Park, one of our IMS graduate students, who actually originally started training in Michael Failing's lab, she uh, designed an in vitro system to look at myelin-induced degeneration, and what she found was that on myelin, neurons readily degenerate. Here we're looking at degenerated axons as opposed to wild axons on VSA. This is on myelin. And in addition, she found that axons from the P75 neurotrophin receptor knockouts really didn't degenerate on myelin. Wild type axons did, that's myelin versus VSA. But the P75 neurotrophin receptor axons did not degenerate on, on myelin. She then looked in vivo at, borvang, at basal forebrain cholinergic axons, which, uh, which their projections go along the supercolossal pathway next to a major myelinated tract, which is, of course, of corpus callosum. And this is sort of a guardrail type where the axons will not go into the project there, uh, project into the corpus callosum. They project around it. And what we found is in wild type axons, when we look at the corpus callosum, here are the basal forebrain cholinergic neurons, that very rarely do they uh, project and sprout onto these myelinated tracts, where, where in axons from the, in the P75 neurotrophin knockout, the basal forebrain cholinergic neurons frequently would sprout onto the myelinated tracts. 
So there looked to me like something profound going on, and what we found was that on those traps, wild-type axons, um, as determined by cat staining, would readily degenerate, but the P75 neurotrophin receptor axons did not. And that could be quantified here, where axon degeneration we saw from wild-type axons occurs on myelinated traps, but not from the P75 neurotrophin receptor mice. So it looks like P75 is mediating and causing axons that are aberrantly sprouting onto myelin to degenerate. So as a signaling person, I'm always asking, what are the pathways and can we overcome this degeneration of axons? And so this is just an example of a P75 of a track signaling pathway. And this is the pro-growth pathways. This is a survival pathway. This is another growth pathway that's used by PI3 kinase. And what we figured out is we can hyper-stimulate these pathways by overexpressing this protein in axons called GAB1, which activates both of the very important arms of the nerve growth factor pathway. So nerve growth factor is generally protective against degeneration, while not on myelin-induced degeneration. So if we hyperactivate these pathways, can we then prevent the, the, the degeneration on myelin. Just focusing here, this is an example of axons degenerating on myelin, but when we overexpress a protein where you get high MAC kinase and PI3 kinase signaling, the major arms of nerve growth factors, so we've hyperactivated that pathway, we completely will do where we'll overcome degeneration. So this is just degeneration normally in nerve growth factor of the wild type axons on myelin, and that's the degeneration um, in response to pi mac kinase and pi3 kinase signaling. So we can overcome this degeneration in a number of ways. So what we found here is that there's a receptor mediated, receptor being this P75 neurotrophic receptor, um, that is mediating degeneration on myelin. And we think this is a way, way to maintain neuronal connectivity. One of the functions of myelin is not just for, uh, for uh, circuitry, but also to maintain the correct connectivity in the nervous system. We found that ligand induced as a distinct signaling path pathway. And it looks like it's almost an apoptotic pathway. The culmination is a specific axonal caspase is activated, resulting in degeneration. And well, a number of signals which have been worked on by some number of people in this room, such as nerve growth factor, cyclic AMP, can overcome P75 induced signal. And I just have to always thank, it's, it's, it's not us, but the people in the lab who do all the work, these are three very talented graduate students, IMS students, who got lots of nice papers to analyze to get this grant for the last 10 years. The work I've talked about was published by Koch and Nature Neuroscience last year. So just for the last couple of slides, I just wanted to talk about the work of the lab in using stem cells in therapy. And this is a transition into the next few talks from um, Charles and from Michael Failings on using different stem cell sources for spinal cord injury. And the source we use is a dermal stem cell discovered by Frieda Miller's lab, which is neural crest-like. It can differentiate when you isolate it from the dermis. It's an accessible source. It's good. We think it's great for autologous transport. You can take it transplants. You can take your own skin. Differentiate these cells into various different types. These are adult cells, and they readily make functional swan cells, both from mass and from human. So. Frieda has been using these cells along with Wolfram Katzlaff's lab, and they published a paper in 2007 in Journal of Neuroscience in an acute spinal cord injury model that these cells bridge the lesion site, they modify the scar to promote axonal regeneration, they allowed remyelination of both spared and regenerating axons, they recruited endogenous myelinating lead to injury, and they enhanced functional recovery. But the question that we are asking is one which Michael will also talk about, what about chronic spinal cord injury repair? Because that's probably much more important therapeutically. So this is just recent results from Wolfram and Frieda's lab, where they used Schwann cells, which they differentiated with forced and neuregulin from skips, these dermal stem cells, and what they found is that they would integrate and myelinate in the chronically injured cord. And so that's the paradigm that's used, two-month-old rats, allow them to behaviorally stabilize, transplant about a million cells in, assess behaviorally after eight to 12 weeks, and also to look at axons. This is neurofilament staining. Those are the skips that are along the axons. If we look at markers for myelin and for uh, and also for nodes rhombia, they appear to be myelinating the regenerated axons, as shown by CGRP staining, 5-HT staining, TH staining, to look at ascending and descending axons, as well as tracing. And these are P0-expressing skips in the lesion site. 
So yellow means these cells are GFP labeled, that's the skips that we'll put in, P0, mile marker for, um, for Schwann cells. So it appears that these cells survive in the chronic, the injured spinal cord, and they can remyelinate and promote regeneration. And most importantly, Wolfram's lab has found is they'll promote functional recovery. They enhance open field locomotion and normalize gait. And this is weeks post injury. This is, <coughs> excuse me, the BBB score. And this is mean high limb stride length. So it looks like in these uh, experiments, skips really are in this chronically injured spinal cord a potential accessible source, so you can get these from your own skin. We now know how to make myelin, how to make Schwann cells that myelinate from human skips quite well. And we're now testing the human cells in this model, as well as with Ryan Kwan in a pig model of spinal cord injury. So thanks a lot.